Okay, 90 points on the Nifty. 10,815 is what we have uh, at this point in time. Uh, we promise commodities and commodities, here they come. Manisha is here with uh, exactly a focus on what's happening with metals. Manisha, morning. Morning, Prashant. Thank you so much for that. Well, yes, a uh, very strong day continuing for the metal space. And as you guys were, uh, you know, discussing earlier as well, it really has much of the cues coming in from China, where we have seen the central banks uh, cut the requirement ratio by 100 basis points, and that clearly has been supportive. So almost everything from steel to iron ore to copper prices and, uh, uh, you know, aluminum, zinc, all of that has started Asia on a very stronger note. So whether it is in Shanghai or LME or the Indian markets, we have seen the metal prices gain up. Not just that, it also has to do with the strong U.S. non-farm payroll data, the Powell statements, the decline in U.S. dollar, all of that has been supportive as well. And while, of course, markets are concerned about the demand growth for 2019, but it is going to be the tight supplies which will continue to support many of these metals going forward. Mark Tuo of Wing Fung Financial then joins us to talk more about that. Mark, hi, morning. What is your sense on the latest steps that the China has been taking in sense of requirement ratio, uh, the kind of boost that we saw coming in on for the railways, and, of course, the expectation that we could perhaps even see further measures from here on? Uh, thanks for having me. I think um, the Chinese authorities are now having uh, some kind of a bottleneck uh, in terms of the uh, structural reforms. Uh, so uh, in terms of the uh, policy options, um, uh, especially for the uh, monetary policies, uh, they have to be very careful uh, not to have too much uh, that may uh, uh, induce uh, more asset bubbles that may be more vulnerable in the long run. But on the other hand, they have to take care of the downside, uh, especially the downward trend in the uh, GDP growth as, as well as the other economic data. So at this moment, uh, I don't think that they have too much options. Uh, so people, uh, the, the market participants' expectations uh, for further actions in, in, in the coming few quarters have to be more cautious, I think. But of course, for the very short term, especially because uh, we can see that the market has been affected negatively uh, for the past few months uh, uh, based on the the, uh, uh, the uh, Sino, uh, Sino U.S. trade wars concerns as well as the uh, tightening uh, of the interest rate high despite the criticism uh, from Donald Trump. All these things, all these uncertainties around the, the market, uh, basically we can see that the market has been uh, uh, in, at, 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 a, at a pessimistic uh, a situation. So um, the reason uh, dovish comments from uh, Fed Chairman Powell as well as uh, from the uh, PBOC's uh, uh, more active, more proactive actions should be more uh, positively understood uh, by the market participants. And for the asset uh, classes, I tend to think that uh, at its very short term, uh, the risk aversion demand will be a little bit uh, 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 depressed at this moment. So you can okay. see that uh, for for the bonds, for the mm. for the yen, uh, for the yen, as well as for for the gold prices. Mm. But in the medium term, I tend to think that these risk aversion uh, will come back uh, later, and uh, people should have been uh, more cautious than uh, right now they expressed. Okay, oh, that that point is well taken. That while of course today is a good day, but that doesn't really mean that the that we are going to see this kind of a buying for the ne for the next few quarters as well. But Mark, coming on the U.S. and China trade talks that have begun in Beijing today, markets are really, uh, uh, you know, very uh, anticipating quite a bit of a positive outcome from that one. Of course, it is today and tomorrow as well. And while, of course, the markets are anticipating some kind of statements to continue to come in from there, how are you treating metals, especially with that in mind? Uh, yes, um, that that is very important. I tend to think that the uh, investors uh, have the in anticipations and they are uh, well reasoned uh, in, in a certain sense. But of course, uh, in terms of uh, let's be uh, pragmatic and realistic, uh, we don't expect that uh, the, the the Chinese authorities as well as the U.S. government can reach uh, some very substantial agreements or uh, or consensus at uh, any time soon. So basically. It is just uh, some kind of gesture that may signal uh, further cooperation rather than confrontation. And, and I think that that's at, at least a, a step forward for, for a whole long journey. Hmm. Mark, within the metal space, where do you see better fundamentals then? Because uh, for some of them, like perhaps a, a copper or a zinc, we are looking at tight supplies in this year. Uh, iron ore, uh, you know, steel have done better than many other metals in the previous year as well. We've seen very strong gains come in today. But uh, with the kind of tight supply situation for some of these, uh, are, you, are you a willing buyer for them? 
Uh, I will be more uh, more cautious. Uh, uh, well, while being optimistic, I, I tend to be cautious because uh, it, the the variables, the supply demand conditions for these things, are uh, uh, in terms of the real terms, uh, they, they 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 should be ra- ra- relatively stable. Uh, what what is now uh, really disturbing is the market sentiment, uh, the uncertainties around uh, Donald Trump's uh, what what he said or what what what, what he what he did, mm. and these things. Things are more uh, uh, volatile uh, in, in, in the market terms. But for the uh, actual supply and demand for the industrial uses, those space metals, I tend to think that they, they, these are not really affected at all. Mm. So would you say that perhaps a couple of them, like a copper or a nickel or zinc, actually might see some buying on these current levels? Uh, I will. I tend to think that some people may make it buying uh, at, at least for a very short term for uh, some kind of uh, a positive momentum. Mm. Uh, at least for the short term, maybe for the coming few weeks. Okay. Uh, but um, some some people tend to ne- liquidate the position, the long position, uh, while further in 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 the mid in the mid year uh, 2019. Hmm. All right. Okay, all right, Manisha, as well as Mark. Thanks very much for joining in and taking us through that conversation on the commodity space.